Hi everybody, Paul here again. Okay, so today what I'd like to do is an in-depth review on the Excalibur Matrix 380 crossbow. Okay, now I've hunted with a compound bow for 25 years, so I thought it would be nice to have a crossbow now that they're legal to hunt within my state. So after doing weeks of research online, I knew that I wanted a high poundage crossbow so that my arrow would shoot as flat as possible, but that meant if I had a compound crossbow, the amount of stress on the cams and bushings would be to the extreme, and I just wasn't comfortable with that. So I came to the personal conclusion that I wanted a recurve crossbow instead of a compound crossbow because they are simpler and simply have less problems. So to make a long story short, when it was all said and done, I chose an Excalibur because they've been making recurve crossbows since 1983, which is by far longer than any other crossbow manufacturer. And they also had very good reviews. Uh, my wife's uncle also had an Excalibur and he's been very happy with his. I also called Excalibur a number of different times to ask them various questions before I purchased one. I never had any problems being able to talk to someone. They were always very friendly, always answered my questions, never made me feel rushed to get me off the telephone, and always said feel, feel free to call back if I had any other questions. So that said a lot to me about the company and it just it just went a long ways in my book. So the Excalibur Matrix 380 seemed to be the closest thing that I was looking for, so I went to an archery store to test shoot one. It turned out that the person who helped me said that of all the different brand crossbows they sold, they had by far the least amount of problems with the Excaliburs, and that less than 1% of the customers brought them back. He also said they came with the best made arrow. So the Matrix 380 specifications are as follows. The velocity is 380 feet per second with a 350 grain arrow. That is the minimum arrow weight that you can use. The draw weight is 260 pounds, but with a rope cocking aid, it's cut in half to 130 pounds. The power stroke travel of the string is 13.1 inches. It shoots 112.3 pounds. The overall length is 35 and 5 eighths inches. The overall width uncocked is 30 and 9 16 inches. So I still consider this a compact crossbow. Now Excalibur says the mass weight is 5.9 pounds, which they said consists of just the, the stock mainframe and the limb. So I weighed just those items with a very accurate scale three separate times and I got seven pounds, 1.6 ounces each time. So I just don't know where they're getting this 5.9 pounds from. The total weight of mine with the stock mainframe, limb, string, scope, scope caps, scope rings, quiver and bracket is eight pounds. Okay, so the crossbow package that I bought was a number 3900, which is right on the box here, as you can see, and I got the blackout color um, but it came in a it came in a very nice box and everything was packaged exceptionally well um, so it came with the the stock mainframe you get a it comes with a two stage two and a half pound trigger it's got a built-in scope rail it's got a cheek rest. It's got uh, it's got front and rear 
uh, mounting points for a slinger rest. Then you've got your limb and your, your limb bolts and your string. It also comes with the tack zone scope and the front and rear scope caps, scope rings. Uh, it comes with the four arrow quiver with the bracket. And then it did come with four 18 inch Diablo carbon arrows, but I don't have those because I, I sold mine. And I'll talk about that later. And then it also came with four 150 grain uh, field tips. It's got the manual rope cocking aid, and then it came with uh, an instruction DVD, and it came with the crossbow manual, and also with a scope manual. And it also comes with a lifetime. Okay, so let's go a little more in depth. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, the machining is a 10. It's machined with incredible precision with no burrs or sharp edges. The fit of everything is a 10 and the finish on the metal is a 10. It's almost as though the metal has some kind of permanent coating on it which gives it a really nice appearance. And the finish on the, on the stock is, uh, you can tell is of very high quality as well and the finish on the limbs. You can move the safety um, back and forth it, uh, with uh, no noise. Now this is an aftermarket trigger that I've got in right now. I'll talk about that later. But whichever trigger you have, they're extremely quiet. It's in the fire position right now. If I put it into the safe position, no noise back into the fire position, no noise. So that's real important. You're not gonna spook any of your game when you move that lever. Um, it also has the Guardian anti-dry fire system, which you see right here. <coughs> this lever moving back and forth. And what this does is it prevents the crossbow from completely firing if you forget to put an arrow in it so it doesn't damage your limbs and also allows for decocking. So if you're if 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 you cocked it and your string comes back here and you go to fire it without an arrow in, what'll happen is the string will actually come forward and then it'll stop. It'll stop right there. And then you can just with uh, your cocking rope aid um, you can just pull it back into the cock position it's very very simple um, it also has really nice front and rear ribbing with rubber grips and a thumb indentation on both sides it's amb ambidextrous so it's for a right or left hand shooter um, it just really really fits my head. okay so the limb system has what's called reds these right here which stands for recoil energy dissipation system these bumper pads absorb the energy instead of your limbs at the end of the stroke and help to reduce noise and rotating the pads occasionally will also help them last longer. Let's go to the scope. Okay, this is the Taxone scope. It's very compact and has a 30 milli millimeter tube for maximum light gathering. The glass is exceptionally clear and you can focus it specifically for your eye. The reticle has 10 yard graduation marks from 20 up to 60 yards it has it's got uh, finger click adjustments okay no screwdriver needed which is really nice half inch adjustments at 20 yards 
it has a 270 to 410 feet per second adjustment dial right here. It has a battery operated red and green lighted reticle for low light conditions which can be adjusted for brightness. It's also waterproof and shockproof. So the scope is designed to be sighted in at 20 yards and then shots beyond 20 yards are adjusted for accuracy with the feet per second dial. A chronograph to measure the speed of your arrow also helps to sight it in, but it's, it's not a must. Now, I, I did not use the factory rings or the scope cover caps, and I'll, I'll talk about that later. You've also got the uh, rope cocking aid. It's excellent quality. It makes it easy to cock the crossbow once you get the proper form and technique down. When you're out hunting, you can also manually decock the crossbow with the rope cocking aid if you don't shoot an arrow, which is really, really nice and easy to do. Most crossbows, you've got to discharge the arrow if you don't end up shooting any game. This one you don't. So I have found this crossbow to be extremely accurate using a shooting rest. I'm shooting approximately one inch groups at 60 yards with field tips and broadheads. I'll give you my arrow specs later. It balances excellent. Another thing I really like is the crossbow is designed to shoot an arrow that has a flat aluminum rear knock insert with a threaded hole. This way you don't need a cock feather or cock vein and can insert any feather or vein face down in the rail. You also don't have to worry about a plastic knock cracking, causing a partial dry fire and possibly damaging your limbs. You can also pull the arrow out of the target with Excalibur's arrow puller, which I also did a YouTube on. Now, I did buy separately an Excalibur stringing aid, which is basically a portable bow press, which I did another YouTube on, which I highly recommend you watch. In my opinion, there's just no excuse for Excalibur not to have included the stringing aid with the crossbow. The reason you have to have one is because the string is going to stretch and you're going to have to make adjustments on the string to maintain the proper brace height or in case you need to replace the string in the field. With the stringing aid, both of these tasks can be done very quickly. Now, there's two reference points which you can use to maintain the, the proper brace height either from the inside of the string to this machine area or from the inside of the string to the face of the bumper pad. I think the best reference point is just to keep the distance of the string 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch away from the bumper pads per the specification settings. So I just keep it at a quarter inch. Another thing I found out was if you want to be able to stand it up on the stirrup like so in a hunting blind with a broad head on the arrow then the longest arrow shaft you can use is a 19 inch. Also if you're going to if you're going to shoot an aluminum arrow it's designed to shoot a 22 64th of an inch outside diameter aluminum shaft. And another thing I found that was kind of interesting was that for each additional 10 grains of arrow weight over 350 grain minimum, you'll lose approximately 3 feet per second. Now I did make some modifications on mine. I replaced the factory 2 stage 2.5 pound trigger with a single stage 2.5 pound trigger from Trigger Tech. This is what the mechanism looks like right here. This is Excalibur's. 
and uh, the mechanisms are pretty much identical on the outside. You just screw your trigger onto this face here. But for me, the difference between these two triggers was night and day. Now it's like a high-end custom rifle with no creep or grit, which improves my shooting accuracy. Also, the factory trigger needs occasional lubrication, whereas trigger tech needs none. Now, having said that, some people some people like the factory trigger okay um, my wife's uncle likes his but I personally did not like it but I'm used to single stage triggers so it's just a matter of personal taste and if you're not familiar with single and two stage triggers here's the difference okay a single stage trigger just basically means when you go to squeeze the trigger it's not going to move, okay? It's what they call at the wall. You're going to squeeze, 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 and when it reaches the two and a half pounds, boom, it's going to break. It should break clean like, like glass. And that's exactly what this do, what this this Trigger Tech one does. Um, the two stage, the way it works is, you squeeze and the trigger travels and you keep squeezing squeezing and it keeps traveling and then all of a sudden the two and a half pounds of pressure will build up and then all of a sudden boom it'll fire okay so that's basically in a nutshell that's the difference between the two now i did replace the factory scope caps with butler creek scope caps okay um it's just personal preference again but i just I like these a lot better than what X, what came with Excalibur. And basically you just on the front one you've got these two ears. And so, you know, you can use your right or left hand and you're just pushing on that outer part and it pops up. And then your rear has this lever here that you just push down and it pops up. But again, it's just all personal preference. But if any of you folks out there are interested in getting a set of these uh, Butler Creek scope caps for this particular scope, what you're going to want is you're going to want a uh, you're going to want a ten uh, eyepiece for the front, and that's going to be item number three zero one zero zero. And then the rear is going to be a 14 eyepiece. And the part number on that is going to be Amazon Mike 020140. And then I also I ended up replacing the factory scope rings with Leopold PRW 30 millimeter scope rings in a size low because the factory rings just they just didn't have the precision that I wanted and they also had a height variation of 15 thousandths of an inch so that's something you're not going to have a problem with with Leopold and for any of you who are interested in buying a set of these Leopold rings again they're the PRW rings they're 30 millimeter low in a matte finish and that part number is 170 512 and also I, I didn't use the carbon arrows that came with and chose instead to make my own custom aluminum arrows and I'm very pleased uh, you know I'm very pleased with how they're performing they shoot like darts out to 60 yards and the specs on these arrows are this is a an Easton aluminum shaft and it's a 2213, which is the super light, and it's the double X75, and it's in the camo hunter finish. And I took the shafts, I cut them down to night, I cut it down to 19 inches. Then I took an Easton aluminum insert, inserted one in the front, and the same one in the back. The only difference is on the rear one, I knocked down that sharp edge. And I did a YouTube on that that you can watch how I did that. And uh, 
again this is really nice because it also allows you to pull the arrows out of your target with with the Excalibur T-handle puller and then uh, the feathers are true flight turkey feathers they're four inches long a half inch wide and uh, you know they've been glued on with precision with a bits and burger uh, fletching jig and the the arrow itself the total weight of this with a you know 150 grain uh, field tip or broadhead the total arrow weight is 420 grains and the FOC is 11.76 and I'm, this is shooting at 362 feet per second. So I, I also did a YouTube showing how to build one of these arrows, if any of you folks are interested in that. And then just another piece of information, um, I, I use on the string, I just use bony wax, and I also use ballistol oil for the rail lube to make the string last longer. Uh, I, I did another YouTube on ballista oil, which you might want to watch. So in summary, the only negative comments I have so far is when it's fired, it's noisier than my compound bow, but that's going to be true with any crossbow. Um, when I took it out of the box, the string was already installed and had it, it had stretched and had smashed really hard into the rubber pads but the pads are fine now so don't freak out if yours comes that way too and as I mentioned the advertised factory weight is not correct but that wouldn't have changed my purchase decision so I would just sum it up I'd sum it up by saying that it's built like a tank it screams quality and they really knocked this crossbow out of the park um, I purchased mine on eBay, and that's probably where you'll get your best price. I'd also purchase an extra string just in case something happens so you can get right back to hunting. No one asked me to do this video, and I have no association with Excalibur. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helps someone out there. Please feel free to ask me any questions. Be safe hunting. Have a great day. God bless you. Enjoy the great outdoors, and bye for now.